Okay, so uh, my stream is going to be a little different this week because I'm making a crafting project that I need you guys to be able to see my hands and what I'm doing more than with just crocheting. So, uh, tonight we are going to make a bottled bone fairy, and there is a slight delay compared to what it would be normally. Um, I was going to do this yesterday, Sunday, my normal stream night, but um, we had an impromptu D&D &D game with my group, and then I was going to do it earlier today, um, but my spouse's... Uh, grandfather passed away and we went to spend some time earlier today with uh, their mom uh, since it was her dad and she's kind of hurting for it. So that said, we're going to swap over. Here we go. Okay. Uh, during the D&D game last night, I did prep a few things for the uh, project. So here we have what's going to be our base. Um, I used a piece of cork and painted it after cutting it in half to look like a log and then I attached some uh, craft moss, just fake moss. I also cut little bits off of our skeleton we'll be using. Almost everything I'm using tonight came from Dollar Tree because um, I wanted this to be an inexpensive build. Um, the things that didn't are the wings that will be attached. I do intend to paint these wings, so I'm not actually going to attach them tonight, um, but they will be going on the back of the skeleton, so he will have a nice little dead gun. Figuring out where the camera is comparatively. There we go. Nice little fairy wings. Um, once they're painted. Right now I'm going to be mostly using super glue to affix the skeleton to the uh, actual little stand we're using and then I've got these little bits of uh, leg and you know arm and stuff that I've cut off that I'm going to be uh, posing to get the idea that I want. Now it is different during crafting screen streams as opposed to game streams. I can see the chat, so if anyone has any questions, things they want to ask about, feel free to do so. Um, the let's see. I don't know if that already has a hole in it or not. We will see if I can get some glue to come out. Then yes, it does. Yes. Okay, so it's just slower to come out. Does not need much if you are using the Gorilla Super Glue, so uh, don't expect to have to take very long holding something in place. It says it only takes 10 seconds. Um, I actually would have already gotten the skeleton posed at least. Oop. Okay, it takes a little longer than 10 seconds then apparently. Um, I would have gotten imposed already yesterday. I was planning to do that while I was gaming. Ah, dad gum. Okay. Well then. Okay, so we get to start part of putting this together from scratch then. That's okay. I am fine with that. Um, we're going to go ahead and a little bit of this super glue to the underside of the cork and we're just going to plant that it says you only have to hold it for 10 seconds we will see since it already didn't hold with our skeletons butt though that might be because he's so bony he didn't have many spots that could affix, so. No, it is not. Huh. Well. I had actually been using the paint to get things to stick. 
but I'm wondering if the paint is why it won't stick now. give me a chance to get him situated in a position more like what I want. What I might do is just turn this and put a dot of glue under each hip bone and give that a minute or two to dry. Um, I did get this idea from a, uh, just one of those uh, videos you see on Facebook, and it was specifically put out by Dollar Tree to showcase some of the things you can make using items from Dollar Tree. That's why I made it a point to mention the jar we're going to be using came, came from Dollar Tree. Um, I did paint the inside of the lid a nice foresty green uh, the craft moss is also from Dollar Tree and I put it in one of the little craft bottles that Dollar Tree sells the skeleton is part of a uh, pack of skeletons that they have for sale at Dollar Tree among their Halloween items um, no. he's just not gonna stick Huh, I wonder how they did this. Like, it just showed them, like, putting things together, and oh, look, they all stuck, and I might have to use hot glue, and I was hoping not to, because hot glue is honestly more of a pain in the tail to work with. But, needs be. We're just going to give him a little bit longer to sit there, see if we can't get it to connect. Um, the reason I clipped some of his limbs is he actually did not, if I sat him with his back against the back of the uh, jar, his feet stuck up in the air. So I went ahead and trimmed off the legs and feet so that I can instead pose him in a way that is more fitting for a fairy to be sitting say in a woodland glade, something similar. I'm going to go ahead and attach these little bits of moss and hopefully that'll add a little bit of sticking powder power to the uh, the cork that is serving as our log. I didn't want him just sitting flat on the uh, base of the jar, I wanted him to have something to sit on, because I can't sit flat on something, I, I need something to sit on, so, and I figure if my joints hurt with the uh, fairly ample padding that I have, then surely a skeleton who has no padding would hurt even more to sit on the ground. So, okay. Why does the 10 second hold Gorilla Glue Super Glue not want to stick? I am starting to think I might need to get a hold of some zip kick, which I have, but it's over there, and I don't really want to go get it. Okay, we're going to briefly use that to prop him up. We're going to see about adding a few additional environmental pieces. Uh, this is just fake, or well actually it's real pebbles, uh, black ones, that we're going to use to add some 
rocks to his surroundings. Because, I mean, surroundings need rocks. Especially if it's meant to be a woodland environment. Okay. So let's just grab a little bit of these. And... Let's put a dab of glue here. And drop a little rock on it. Who knows, maybe the rocks will stick better. Go ahead and pull the bottle away. Okay, so the next thing I want to do if he stays. We'll see. We'll know in a few. Now, won't we? But if he is now stuck in place, which he is not, of course he's not. I don't get... I don't know if it's the cork that's not sticking or the skeleton that's not sticking. We're gonna try... I can get... Fine, you want to lay down? Go ahead. I just want to get... Oh, might as well grab a little bit of that. And see if I can't get these two bits of bone to stick back together. Nope, it's it's the skeleton. Skeleton is the problem. That or there's just something. How am I supposed to get this stuff to cure? It's supposed to do it automatically. Let's Bonds instantly. Yeah. Well, it's obviously not bonding. This is pretty much the same problem I was running into yesterday when I was trying to stick the wings. I think I'm going to have to use hot glue. And if I have to use hot glue, this is going to have to be completed another day because I'm not getting it all set up right now. The other option is seeing if plain Elmer's glue will work, which I hate to use because it's not quite as sturdy normally, but it does cl dry clear. So, give me a moment.
Okay, I am back with a big, well, big-ish bottle of the standard Elmer's School Glue. And we're going to try and see if that sticks a little better to him. I mean, in terms of quick and easy, it, outside of super glue, it's probably one of the easiest. Does mean it's going to take us a little bit longer to get everything put together because, again, it takes longer to dry. Mm -hmm. While we're waiting, we're going to see if I can get his arm. To glue together. And you can see where I clipped things. Because I didn't like how it was originally positioned. either. We're going to give him a few. We're going to see if he'll dry sitting as he is. If he does, great. Then we figured it out and we'll go from there. If he doesn't, I'll probably have to move him, get a different skeleton, cut them up, see what we can do from there. Um, Okay, so since we can't do that right now, we gotta wait on the glue to dry. Um, I'm gonna get started on that is the that's the foot that needs to be over here. I'm gonna get started on painting the wings. So that means another of me going away for a few minutes. Um, because of course my paints are over there, as are my paintbrushes and all of that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, be right back again. I will see y'all shortly.
Okay, I return again. I've got... Got some little cheap paintbrushes. My little paint pot that I use, which is actually a yogurt container. <laughs> that, uh, it was glass, or uh, ceramic, and I like it. So it gets to be my uh, paint pot. The paints that I am using are a uh, brand called Horizon Group. They are nothing fancy. I think I paid five bucks for the entire set. But they work, so... Okay. And whenever you're painting, you don't want to paint directly onto anything that you don't want paint on. So what I do is I just set a little piece of cardboard or something similar in the way. Okay. Um, since the wings are already black, what we're going to be doing is to give them more of a Halloweenish feel. We will be adding primarily red. At least I think it's red. Heck if I know. I'm partially colorblind. So, okay. Um, yeah, but my. Actually, no, we're not starting with the red. We're starting with a tan that is similar-ish to the color of the bones. And I'm not going to do anything fancy in this case. I'm not going to, like, mix different paint colors together. Um, this is just a simple, easy thing. I'm sure there are other crafters who could make it much fancier and much better than I'm going to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tan to make an outline of bones on the wings. Because I don't know about y'all, but I love ridiculously inaccurate, anatomically improbable skeletons. And what could be less accurate than bone wings on a fairy? Or on any butterfly, actually. And then, so we will create our base bone. And this isn't going to be nice or fancy. Um, it'll look good in the end because, I mean, it's a butterfly and butterflies always look good. Um, but for right now, it's just going to be this real simple and then we're going to add bone stretching up through that wing okay. so we did it Where's the camera? There it is. That way? No, this way. There we go. That's our bone wing outline. Now, go ahead and do the other side. Same thing. Just a basic outline of the wing. Bone on this side's a little thicker. Must have had an accident of some sort that damaged the original bones. So they grew back thicker.
should have probably cleaned my brush before this point. Um, that's how I ended up with it so thick was by not cleaning it. So let's go ahead and do this side as well. Gotta be a careful medium between too much and not enough, and I'm not good at finding it. as nice as I would have liked, but it'll do for now. I gotta wait on that to dry. So when that one's dry, we will swap over to the red and start adding little spots that hopefully will look like blood or viscera of some sort. That's the goal. Hey, it finally stuck. Good. Okay, so. I don't want to move him too much because that's still damp. But what I want to do is I want to get his leg up. So that I can glue his knee to itself. I don't want to use a lot of glue for this. I want a very tiny amount that basically will form a kneecap for him. So we're going to hold him for a little bit just to give that glue time to set. And then we'll do the same for the other side as well. Once we have his feet in place properly and his knees attached and we're not worried about him falling apart, I'm going to just set a couple of these to hold that steady. Okay, so once his... Uh, knee is glued in place. Then I'm going to put one of his arms so that his hand is resting against the back of his knee. And I'm going to, I'm planning to put a skull in his hand. And I'm going to have to go cut another skull off uh, to do that, which is fine. That's not a problem. Because this is going to be our little bone fairy who is contemplating life and mortality. Or, you know, just hanging out. That works too. Um, okay. So we're waiting on the wings to dry. We're waiting on that knee to dry. Once the knee's dry, I can figure out what I want to do. Whether I want the knee... Whether I want it to be his left hand or his right hand that he's holding something in. Um... And then we'll, you know, we'll add a bit more uh, 
what I tend to refer to as flotsam to the uh, to the ground to make it look more like a woodland scene because you don't wander around in the woods and find just clear patches of earth very often. There's generally some grass, some lichens, some stones, things like that, uh, bits of bark. Um, so we'll get it all taken care of. It, it'll be fine in the end. Once the front of the wings, the part that'll be against his back, is dried, I'll go ahead and uh, completely dry it, including the red spotting. Uh, we'll go ahead and flip them over and then paint the other side, because of course I want it to look good 360, since it will be in a glass jar. Um, one of the things I'm planning to do is set up a uh, a way that I can turn the light that will be hanging down in here, inside our lid, on and off so that it doesn't have to be on just until the uh, light burns out and then, you know, you can never do anything with it again. Um, probably what I'll be doing, and I'm still not sure that this size jar is big enough for him, um, it's a little taller than him, which is great, but uh, there's a rise in the center of it. It does not sit flat on the bottom, so it pushes him up slightly, and I just want to make certain that he's going to sit proper instead of you know, falling over every time, and I want to make certain that he's not so tall that you cannot see, um, that you can't see him when we're doing things with him. Hold on just a second here. Okay. Alright, back to our stream. Okay. Alright, still waiting on the glue to dry on the knee. This is almost dry. I think the top half of the wing is dry enough I can start adding my red. It's just going to be small dots and dollops, not going to be anything uh, too thick. And something I've been doing with this particular paint, um, I've been taking these lids off and then just putting the cap back on this. And if I don't need a lot of paint, I'm dipping it in the uh, paint that I pulled off the lid. And let's see, I'm gonna push down right here to hold it steady. And I am honestly not too fussed if it gets a little smeared because, remember, this is supposed to look bloody and gory and this is not your pretty little fairy you see in a, well, one of the only times you see fairies is in, like, uh, Peter Pan and honestly, Tinkerbell was not nice if you ever read the book. She was a jealous little thing. And it sort of hints at that in the Disney movie, but it doesn't really go into a lot of detail on it. So. And there. still wet so you can't see it as it's going to look dried. Nothing ever looks the same wet as it does dry, but that's okay. But that actually looks really good. And I think it's going to look great when it's attached to the back of our fairy. 
bad thing about these uh, particular acrylic paints. I like them. I will. I will say that. I like them. However, they have a nasty habit of when you clean them off the brush they drip down into the bottom of the water and if you dr drop your brush too deep then you end up with uh, when you try to clean the brush you end up with dribbles of the paint on it okay all right so This arm is going to have to go down here because there's no way it would naturally be sitting on that knee. Okay, so there's that that I know now. Okay, do turn him a little. Stay. We're gonna. A bit more natural. His hip was turned out weirdly and I've just pushed it back in. So what we're going to do is to keep that foot where it is right now. I'm going to just... Do I want to do that? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put... some glue there. And then did you look at that? Actually, you probably couldn't have seen it from where I was doing it. Um, but yeah, I put some glue under his foot to hold it where I want it, and then added a little bit of my greenery uh, to sit next to the foot. So that'll hold it in place and not look too weird. Okay. So now we've got our fairy sitting. We've got our wings half painted. We still have to do the back, but they've got to dry first. Got to figure out how to get that arm to stay where I want it to. got to get this leg onto this or this knee and the hand sitting like that on it which I think my best bet is actually going to be to glue the hand to the knee at the same time that I glue the knee to the leg so that's going to wait a couple Okay. For any questions, by the way, about where I picked up the things that did not come from Dollar Tree, um, the butterfly wings were actually from a uh, Bobcat in a Box order. Bobcat in a Box. I'm not an affiliate of them, nothing like that. But I have a subscription to them. They are a shopping bot. They scour the internet. They find things. You set a price of how many items you want per month, how much you're willing to pay per item, and it scours the internet, finds things, and sends them to you at random points. Um, and I got two different packs of these. Uh, butterflies that you then stick to uh, surfaces around your house and so my desk is covered in butterflies and this one I just it was not in a good place on the wall so I pulled it off for this project and uh, cleared it off to use and then the paints I actually got from uh, it's currently called five below they were brought out but it was originally called holler 
and when Holler was bought out, it became Five Below. But I got those through them. It's um, you might even have Five Belows in your town. I love shopping there. It's almost everything is five dollars or below. Um, the things that are not below five dollars are generally marked uh, five and beyond, and they make it very clear. Here's these things. Here's uh, where you can get them, here's how you can get them. Um, they do have a website, you can generally find some really cool things. Um, my kids think that the stuff there is either too young for them, which some of it is, it's meant for littler kids, or too old for them, because a lot of the stuff is more themed for, okay, I have a college student who's getting ready to go out on their own, we need to get them their own stuff for their dorm room. So a lot of it is, uh, themed for either college students or like elementary kids. So um, I enjoy it because uh, I refuse to grow up apparently. So <laughs> um, let's see what else. The rocks I'm pretty sure came from Dollar Tree, but I can't remember for certain. Um, I know I've had them for a couple of years tucked away in a drawer because they were meant for a project that just never happened. Um, the super glue, of course, uh, which apparently doesn't work for us. This is uh, Gorilla Glue super glue that I got from Walmart. Because um, the super glue I had, I thought it had expired because it was refusing to turn into glue or to, to harden. Um, so, you know, I thought I'd just manage to have some expired glue and that's why it wasn't working. Um, the cardboard you're seeing, this was actually the packaging for the skeletons, which again, I got those from Dollar Tree, and I just repurpose things. Um, I don't like to waste, I don't like to throw things in the trash if I can find another use for them, and this is one case where, yeah, I, I had another use for them, so it worked out. Um, the paintbrushes I've had for ages, I'm pretty sure I got them at Dollar Tree, they're leftovers from the year that I did a, hey, we're all going to paint portraits and pictures in the park uh, for their birthday, which actually their friends had a lot of fun. They've still got the paintings they made that year as uh, on their walls. So the, dollar, the jar, again, Dollar Tree, the tea light, which is a flickering tea light, not the ones that you see online that says they are fuckering tea lights. Um, but a flickering tea light, um, and I think that to make it stay in that without it falling, but without sticking it down so I can't remove it, I'll actually be cutting this up to make something to hold it in. Uh, but not right now, not just yet. We're going to leave that as is for now. Let's see. I want to continue doing things, but I have to wait on things to dry, and I don't know how long they're going to take, and I don't know that I'm going to come up with things to talk about for long enough. So what I might do is finish this, and then just show the completed project later on. Um, I've given you the basics of what I'm doing. Um, like I said, I took a cork that I had from who knows, and I cut it in half, painted it to look like a log. I'm using some, uh, it's not the Spanish moss craft foam, or uh, craft moss, it's just the standard craft moss. Um, honestly, it looks like reindeer moss. If you have a way to get your hands on dried reindeer moss, you can do that instead of doing this, because this is uh, plastic, I'm pretty sure, that's just been dried and colored, um, but I'm using the, the moss and the rocks to give the piece of cardboard that I'm using as the base a more natural feel. Um, I'm, I think I remember in the original uh, they used hot glue instead of super glue to stick things together. I just don't like how hot glue looks. It tends to look bulky um, and to dry thicker. And that's why I wanted to use super glue because it's pretty well invisible if done right. Um, but obviously, super glue isn't going to work for this project. I don't know if it's, 
I'm pretty sure it's the plastic of the skeleton that won't super glue. Um, but the Elmer's glue seems to be working just fine. And again, Elmer's glue tends to, the school Elmer's glue tends to glue to dry clear, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, if it dries white in the case of the knee, I will just add a little bit of the tan paint to give him a nice solid patella. Um, anywhere it doesn't dry clear, I can just paint over to make it look right. Um, so I think I'm going to end the stream tonight without having really done much. <clears throat> um, and I'll just work on this in my spare time until it's done, and then I'll show it on a different stream later. Uh, just like I'm planning to do with the pumpkin, which, by the way, is done, except I have yet to add the uh, stem, and that's the only reason I'm not showing it off tonight, is because it doesn't yet have a stem. So, for now, uh, I do want to thank those who came out. I hope that uh, this is giving you ideas for what you can do for your own Halloween. And um, I hope that everyone stays safe. I hope that we take care of ourselves. We take care of each other. And I will see you, hopefully, Thursday night for the gaming stream. All right. Have a good one.